Come on, give him a shout of praise tonight. It's Wednesday night. We worship the name of Jesus. Amen. He's alive. Our Savior is alive. He is not dead. Come on, how many can say praise the Lord tonight? Praise the Lord. He is alive. We serve a risen Savior. Thank you, Jesus. We worship the name of Jesus. Here we go. Come on, let's put our hands together. the name of Jesus tonight. Thank you, God. We worship you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Your grace is enough, God.
Remember your people, God. Remember your children. Remember your promise, God. Thank you, Jesus. Whom the Son has set free, he is free indeed. And we worship and praise the name of Jesus. Are you free tonight, church? We worship you, Jesus. You are worthy, God. Come on, church. We're free tonight. Your freedom is here, God. We worship. Comes alive, speak a word and I'm running into your home. Cause I have seen your life, bring my world to life, coming after your love. Come on, I'm not shaking. I'm not shaking, I'm not letting go. Cause everything comes alive in my life as we lift you higher. Let your freedom arise in our lives as we lift you up. Sing it out, sing it out. Freedom is here. Freedom is here. Take the limits off. Church, put your hands together. Are you free tonight? We worship you, God. Whom the Son has set free, He is free indeed. We worship you, God. You are worthy. Come on, church, lift your hands tonight. We worship you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Are worthy. Oh, be glad because of Jesus. All oh, this promise. One for me when he paid the highest ransom. Once for always for my freedom, I will boast in Christ the Lord, his righteousness. Oh, 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight. Lord, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Christ that covers over our sins. Lord, your word declares, though our sins be as scarlet, they will be made as white as snow. Lord, we thank you because even though they have been that which has separated us from fellowship with you, you made a way that, God, we could come back into fellowship through Jesus Christ. Lord, we just give you praise tonight. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we enter in tonight, I would venture to say that it's middle of the week. It's Wednesday. You've probably had at least one chance to be discouraged this week. Anybody had at least one chance? You know, things that had come against you, circumstances that have been hard, unexpected, somewhat slaps to your spirit. And that's why it's good for us to enter into the presence of the Lord because the Word of God tells us that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there's liberty. What I would invite you to do right now is just to close your eyes for just a moment. 
And to begin to just praise the Lord for something good that He's done for you. You can praise Him for your salvation. You can praise Him for the Holy Spirit that He has given to us. You can praise Him for the fellowship of believers. But let's just thank God together. Heavenly Father, we just thank You tonight that You are in this place. That, Lord, in the middle of this week, in the midst of adversity, in the midst of problems, and, Lord, the midst of things that have gone sometimes not exactly according to how we desired or planned, that, Father God, we still have reason to rejoice. To rejoice in the truth that in you we live, in you we move, in you we have our being. That, Lord, when Satan has come against us like a flood, it is the Lord who will raise up the standard against us. Father, I praise you that Jesus has come into our lives to set us free. I thank you for the Holy Spirit who instructs us your truths. Father, I thank you tonight for the power of healing that is available to us, to heal our relationships, to heal our bodies, to set us free. Whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. If you have a need tonight, I want you to just share that with us by maybe a simple upraised hand this evening. If you have a need tonight, we want to lift you up, believe with you, ask you some upstairs, some right here on the ground. Praise God. We're going to believe the Lord. Look around and know somebody with a hand raised. Take time to know what, who's standing close by and pray with them and for them. We want to pray for uh, Paul's uncle, whose name is Sam. Sam, they, they thought had had some sort of maybe a stroke event over last weekend. We prayed for him last weekend, but as things have developed this week, it appears that he has very developed cancer. And so we want to pray that God would minister to Sam tonight and would touch him, and would lift him up. I want to pray for the Gonzalez family, Brother Nick and Sister Cleo. Both of them have, are doing better, but they've been struggling. They had a daughter who was in the hospital named Carla this week. And some of you know Carla. Let's believe God for her. She had an issue, a pretty serious uh, issue as well with a bleed. So we're going to believe for that. And know that God is able. Amen. How many of you know that God can do it? Whatever it is. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in faith believing. Lord, there are always needs in the realm of the physical where we live. Lord, there's Lord, there is able to find the victory that, that we need tonight. And Lord, I pray this evening that you would touch those who are sick in body. We pray tonight that you would minister to Sam. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would do the work in the life of the Gonzaleses, to Nick's life, and Sister Cleo's life, and Carla's life tonight. Father, for every person this evening who raised a hand, I just pray tonight that you would touch them and that you would minister to them. Father God, we as we depend on you, we would find the answers that are only available in you. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a praise. It is Wednesday night. And what a great group of friends in the room with us tonight. We're glad that you're here. Of course, some are joining with us on Facebook this evening. Before you are seated this evening, wave to somebody. Let them know you're glad to see them. Night have been a few days since you've had the opportunity of fellowshipping together. I know some of you have had to work over the course of the last weekend, and, and uh, that's just part of the way life goes, isn't it? Sometimes we have things that get in our way, but praise God, we're back in the house of the Lord tonight. We're going to share in our time of giving and updates with announcements, but I want to highlight two things that are important. One of them is tonight. In just a moment, we're going to be dismissed. Those who are going to participate in the new members class and some of you have already taken the online portion and you're ready for the uh, orientation. Others of you have said, you know, we want to become members and we still need to, to do the online section, but we want to do orientation. That's okay. Join us. Join myself and Pastor uh, Moises over in room 101, 102. We're going to be sharing with you. And Pastor Mike's going to share the word right here in the auditorium tonight. We look forward to that. But let's thank the Lord for the privilege of giving. Amen. Would you say that God has given something good to you tonight? Oh, we can all say that because he gave us Jesus, right? Jesus came so that you could have life and that you could have it to the full. So we know that God is a giving God and we rejoice in his faithfulness. Gracious Heavenly Father, tonight we give you praise and glory and we thank you for what you have done and are doing. And I just pray tonight that you administer to each and every individual as we have the privilege of sharing in our time of giving. Bless that time to multiply Lord, the resources to meet more people's needs, to share with them life in Jesus Christ. 
bless this evening together in the word and in our time together in Jesus precious name amen and amen God bless you as you give tonight Welcome to Evangel. For everybody's safety, if you're joining us in person today, make sure to pay attention to all of the signage that's posted around the building, along with following all of the ushers' instructions. If you would like to follow along today with the keynote, then you can do so on the YouVersion of the Bible app. If you are in the area, it should just pop right up when you search for us, but if you're not in the area, then make sure that you just look up Evangel Christian Center and then it should pop right up for you. Thank you again for joining us today at Evangel. So we all love a good movie night, and here at Evangel, we'll be showing The Prince of Egypt on February 5th. So please come out and join us as we will not be streaming it online. So come out, make sure you bring your friends and your family. Hush now, my baby, be still now, don't cry, sleep as you Rescued from a river. Come, Ramesses. We will show Pharaoh your new baby brother, Moses. <laughs> second born, second place. Not for long. Raised by royalty. You are not a prince of Egypt. What did you say? Everything I am is a lie. You are our son. I can't stay here any longer. Moses? Please. Goodbye, brother. The truth gave him the courage to do the impossible. Abandon this futile mission, Moses. DreamWorks Pictures presents a story for our time. Look at your life through heaven's eyes. A celebration of the human spirit. Sitting in the sanctuary thinking, I wonder what it would sound like if the praise and worship team performed my favorite song or sang my favorite song. Well, this is your opportunity to do so because this is our yearly praise fest is coming up February 12th. And for your donation of only $20, which is going toward the media department, you can put in a request and they will perform it for you. Along with your selection, your praise song selection, you can also pick who on the praise team you would like to sing that song. I know each of you have maybe your favorite. You can specify that. Then your deadline for your requests is February 5th. So be sure and start that today. Go to the Welcome Center, take care of it. It's $20 per song selection. So the more songs, it's $20 with each song. Remember that this event will be streamed, but you're also gonna have the opportunity to come worship with us here in person. We also have, you can write a check, you can go online, text to give, or pay online at the website, which is Evangel ABQ. But be sure to specify that it is for the Praise Fest, what song it is, and who you would like to sing that song. And be sure to start that today, because the sooner you get it in, the sooner they know the song and they can start practicing it. It's going to be a great time. Remember, February 12th here at Evangel Christian Center for our yearly Praise Fest. Those were some great announcements, They actually. really were. Yeah, they were. If you would like to support the ministries here at Evangel, there's three different ways to do so. And one of the first ways is by using the envelopes and the seat backs right in front of you. You just gotta take them up to the stage as we are not passing the plates right now. Did you know that we have a brand new website? Yes, and that's actually the second way you can give. You can go to evangelabq.org and make sure to go to the menu and click Give. Did you know that we also have a brand new phone number for I, text to give? Yes, I know. New year, new things. Uh, and that number will be right at the bottom of the screen. Well, I bet you didn't know that you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at EvangelABQ. Yes, I did know that and I already do. So make sure you go to your pages and start following us so you can keep up with all important events during the week.
Well, thanks for joining us today here at Evangel, where we're continually reaching out in love. Bye. Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night. Before we get started tonight, if you are here for the 101 orientation class, we're going to go ahead and dismiss you now. Uh, you guys are going to meet in room 101 and 102 with Pastor Breton and I believe Mo as well. So if you guys are here for that tonight, you can go ahead and be dismissed. Uh, just a few housekeeping items. As you guys saw in the announcements, we are having the movie night this Friday night. And if you haven't had a chance to come out and join us for one of our family movie nights, it is a great time of fellowship. And in, we get to show some pretty cool movies. So I'd encourage you to come out, get here just a little bit early. That way we can make sure we're seated and ready to go because sometimes those movies are a little long and sometimes we're here kind of late and the older I get, the more that matters. <laughs> you don't have to laugh at that, guys. I'm just saying. Um, also, for those who are participating in the Praise Fest, there's two things I want to say. One, I am continually impressed by the amount of volunteers that we have here at Evangel and who are willing to get up and sing on stage. Some of them have multiple songs, and not one person this year said, I can't do it. They were like, all right, let's get this done. And two, for each and every one of you who have been uh, donating and requesting songs, we very much appreciate your generosity. There's so many things that are going to be going on this year here at Evangel that we're going to try to upgrade. For those of you who were here with us last year, you knew that because of uh, some of the reallocation of the FCC stuff, we had to invest about $11,500 into microphone systems last year, which is a lot of money. How many of you know that? It's amazing, but this year we're going to be investing in a little bit more equipment as we are going to uh, online for a lot of the stuff that we're doing. We're going to be improving uh, some of the stuff that we have here at the church, and we're even borrowing cameras right now, so we're going to work to get another camera so that we can have uh, our own cameras here to be set up. So if you guys are able to participate in the Praise Fest, either through donations, or if you're just like, you know what, you guys are singing enough songs, um, I'm just going to donate some money to help out with that, that would be awesome. All right, so I think that got through everything we need to talk about before we get started. So tonight we're going to go to the Word of God and we're going to be talking about the importance of change. How many of you really enjoy the word change? Some of you do, most of you don't, which is a typical reaction because change in our lives brings uncertainty. Change in our lives brings uh, a new era, which can be exciting in one way and it can be intimidating in the other. How many of you know a significant change just happened about, you know, a month ago? We moved from the year 2020 into the year 2021. How many of you guys are excited about the year 2021? Okay. <laughs> some of you are. A lot of people seem iffy. I see some heads kind of going like this. I mean, we're coming through the shell shock of a year that was kind of unprecedented for us, right? None of us have really experienced anything kind of like that. And generally, as we get around the new year, we see a lot of people posting about New Year's resolutions. But this year, I didn't see a whole lot of that. Most of it was just simple relief at the fact that we made it through last year. Like, we did it, guys. We're here. Man, I hope this New Year's better. I really do. Because last year was difficult. And we joke about it, but it's true. There were difficult things that we had to go through. I could tell you my job, and I thank God for my job because I was able to do it throughout last year, but it became slightly more difficult because some of you know I'm an associate pastor here, but I'm also the media director, and media got a little more important and a little bit more complicated. I feel bad for my sound volunteers and my video volunteers. There's a, a group that was here that worked every single service, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday mornings for, I believe almost five months that didn't miss one service. Hey, man, give them a hand. Many of you guys don't get to see them because they're always up in the booth or in the streaming room or sometimes on the camera. But things were more difficult. Things changed. But I did see some people saying, you know, this year's going to be better. I'm going to better myself. Well, one of the things that I did a little research on as I was preparing for this sermon is New Year's resolutions. How many of you know that a majority of New Year's resolutions don't get fulfilled? Most of them actually don't. In fact, the, between the studies that I looked at, the consensus was right around 8% of New Year's resolutions make it all the way through the year. In fact, one study said by January 19th, most of them had fallen off. Another study showed that by February 1st, 
almost 80% of rev resolutions are gone, and they're done for. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I want you to think about it. How many of you guys have made a resolution before that you didn't make? I know I have. Because it gets difficult as we get into the year and settle into a routine. It gets difficult for us to change things as time goes on. Well, like I said, this year was a little bit different because last year was way different. How many of you got to work from home last year? Some of you did. How many of you, during the time that you were home, started kind of reevaluating the things that you did? I know I did. I reevaluated the way that we did church. I reevaluated the way that I approached work. I reevaluated the equipment that I needed at home in order to participate in things that I had to participate in. How many of you tried to buy a webcam this year? They were sold out all over the place for a very long time. But we began last year to start thinking about what's important. A lot of employers started thinking, do I need my employees actually here all the time to work? In fact, I got to talk to a few people who said as they went into the new year, their employers are reevaluating the way that they do work. Maybe we don't need everybody in the office all the time. A lot of people are working remotely and they're being effective at it. And there are people who are differing. Some people are like, I work great from home because it's, it's not a big distraction. I can tell you I'm in that category. Sure, there's times where I get distracted and I'm like, you know what sounds nice right now? Some tea. I'm going to go just make a pot of boiling water. I'm going to make myself some tea. And I take a little time out of my work day and I'm just like, yeah, tea. And why did that take me 20 minutes? And some people <laughs> don't work from home well at all. They're like, I have to be in the office. There's too many distractions at home. I can't do the things that I need to do here. But we begin to evaluate what's important, what we should be doing with our time, how we approach problems in our lives, how we approach things that are at home. Maybe even the job that we're in. Is that something that has security for me or do I need to move to a different place where I can stay employed here and there? You see, things became important for us. And as we look to the new year, I would challenge us today to evaluate as we start this new year what is going to be important for you and me. Really set your mind to it. Often when we talk about New Year's resolutions and we talk about New Year's coming, and we look at what's important, we often go to the sub subject of sowing and reaping. Because how many of you know that's a biblical concept? You reap what you sow. That's a physical concept. If you've ever had a garden, you reap what you sow and you put the work into. So let me ask you this. What is it that you are sowing today? What is it that you've sowed the last month or the first month here of 2021? What is it you're expecting to receive out of this year that may be different from last year? And what are you doing right now to affect that change? As we go to the word, we go to a very familiar passage that I've heard many times in the last couple of months. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Now, that scripture breaks it down in a very, very simple manner. Reading that, which one would you choose? Sowing to the spirit or to the flesh? Spirit. Because not one person in this room is like, you know what sounds good? Reaping destruction. That's awesome. Most of us are like, I had enough of that last year. Let's stay away from that this year. But just because it sounds like a good idea doesn't mean we always make it through. As we talked about resolutions, we had that number that only about 8% of them make it through the year. That means 92% of people that set out to do something better with their lives did not accomplish it. Most of those people got tired of moving forward. And they said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to slip back into something that's a little more comfortable and a little more at my pace. And they fail to make that change in their lives. So what causes us to fail at making change in our lives? The first thing I want to talk to you tonight about is this. One simple word, perseverance. Somebody say perseverance. 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 Something that sounds amazing, but when you get down to it, it's very difficult to do. 
You see, one of the most common failures that we have is doing, in doing things right is the fact that it's difficult to accomplish those goals. When we start meeting resistance, and that resistance happens the first time, we may push through it. Some of you may have set a goal at some point to work out. I can tell you, the older I get, the more difficult that becomes. Because I used to work out, and I was sore for like 24 hours after that. And I was like, ooh, man, I can't wait to be over this. And I'd stretch, and i do those foam rolly thingies. You get on the floor, and you just roll your sore muscles on me. You're like, yeah, yeah, break that lactic barrier. Oh, it's great. Now I work out once, and for the next week, I'm hobbling. I'm just like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And we're like, what happened? I did some squats. <laughs> oh, man, it was bad. I never knew there was that many muscles in my leg. I can't even bend it. Look, I'm just like, ah, oh, okay. But perseverance becomes more difficult with time. And many of us turn away from the things that are difficult in order to better ourselves. Even though we know there's a promise of something good on the other end. The Bible says this in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Now, for us, that's something that we look at and we're saying, yeah, that's true. But not many of us actually have to go reap a harvest in order for our survival to happen. How many of you can go down to the grocery store and buy some food? How many of you can, you know, run down the street to Chick-fil-A and pick up some food real quick? How many of you have been impressed about how easy it is to make an order online, drive up someplace, and somebody just hand your food through the window, and you get to go home? As somebody who is, like, partially introverted, that's amazing for me. I don't even have to get down to get my groceries anymore. I could just pull up to Albertsons out there and say, hey, guys, I'm, I'm here. And they're like, here are all your groceries. And all I have to do is carry them in. That's amazing for me. But for those of, of the people who lived in a time like this, they had to reap what they sowed in order for survival to happen. We know a harvest is coming if we pursue the things that are good. But we get turned away when things get hard. James chapter 1 has a similar message starting in verse 12. But it gives a little bit more of a reasoning on why it's so difficult to do that. James chapter 1 verses 12 through 14 says this. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive a crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And then the verse is right after says this. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. What a weird scripture to follow up we should persevere with. When someone is tempted, never say that God is tempting you. You see, you and I struggle with a sin nature in our bodies. We often want to do the wrong things. And it draws us away from doing what is right, especially when it comes to change. You and I set a goal, I'm going to better myself. Whether it's working out or eating healthy or saying, you know what, I'm going to better my spiritual life. And I'm going to wake up a little bit early each morning so I can do my daily devotionals. I can tell you I have never been sleepier than when I read the Word of God. Tell you right now, I ever want to pass out at night, I'll just get up and start reading the Word of God, and the devil's like, no, 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 go to sleep. It's a struggle to do what is right, because our flesh does not want us to do it. We are dragged away and enticed by our own desires. Now, it's not the temptation to sin every single time, but it's a temptation to be okay with the status quo. It's a temptation to say, you know what? You worked out yesterday and you're really in pain, so you know what? You should just let your body relax. You need that recovery time. You're not as young as you used to be. Just, just for today, just relax. And then the next day comes and, ooh, man, it still really hurts. You, you might just want to rest just one more day. And we get okay back to the status quo. Because we are tempted to not do the right things because we have something working against us. We have something pulling us the other way, saying we shouldn't do that. How many of you know if we didn't have to do our New Year's resolutions and somebody else did, us for us, uh, did them for us, it would be a lot easier? There's a, a book that I saw that was, uh, about gardening. It says, don't throw in the trowel. And there was a quote that said, the best way to garden 
is to put on a wide-brimmed straw hat and some old clothes. With a hoe in one hand and a cold drink in the other, tell somebody else where to dig. That would be great. I have this New Year's resolution. Somebody else do it for me. I can't be bothered to change myself. If somebody else can put in the work and I can just walk the path behind them, that would be awesome. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. You see, you and I need to persevere. You and I need to take that change that's ahead of us that we know is good for us. And we need to say, you know what? I'm going to continue on even when the going gets tough. And even when my fleshly nature says to do otherwise. You see, we have to be aware that we have an enemy fighting against us so that we can say, you know what? I really don't want to do this. And I know that my body doesn't really want to do this. And I know that my flesh isn't going to make this easy for me. But if I can make it past today, and I can make it past tomorrow, and I can make it past the next day, and I continue to persevere, scripturally, I know that at the end of this road, God has a reward for me. So that's the first thing we want to talk about, is perseverance. The second thing that holds us back from receiving the harvest that we should be receiving is ignorance. How many of you think that the word ignorance best describes us? Whew, not a lot of amens on that one. We don't like to subscribe to the, the term ignorance because we don't believe that we're ignorant people. In fact, most of us have a pretty good handle on life. Most of us in this room are, can say, you know, I'm an adult. I've held down a job. I have a place of my own. Some of you have had children. Some of you have raised children. Some of your children are going through some of the things in life that you once went through. And you're like, you know what? I have a pretty good handle on this. I'm not really ignorant about much. I can tell you, though, there are times in my life that I get in situations that I've never been in, and I have a small moment of pause, and I think to myself, I need an adult. I need somebody to tell me what to do in this situation. I don't know if you guys are like me, but there are times in my life that I keep questioning myself, am I an adult now? How about now? How about now? Okay, I think I've gotten through everything. Nope, nope, there's something new. I'm coming up to 40 years old. And still, in my life, I look around and I'm just like, man, there are some things that I just don't know. And I rely on others, people who mentor me or have gone before me, in order to understand what the thing is that I need to do. So you and I need to get to a place where we have to say, you know what, I don't know it all. I need something outside of myself to help me accomplish these goals. Because we are mortal creatures. We have limitations. There's only so much that you and I can handle as a people. We don't like to think that at all. How many of you guys in this room have to take the groceries in in one trip? Ooh, I saw hands on that one. I have to raise my hand too. I have to admit it. How many of you have ever suffered that thing where you have lines going all the way up your arm from the plastic bags as you're walking in just like, I can make it. It's fine. I can do this. And then you get to the door and your keys are in your pocket. And you're just like, no. What do I, how do I get? How do I, so, someone take the keys out of my pocket. Because we want to believe that we can accomplish it on our own. And the truth is, we don't. Or we're not able to. We need help from others. Because you and I, in some places in our lives, act in ignorance because we don't know what the right answer is. Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, gives a very clear picture of what we should be doing as Christians. Oh, I'm so sorry. I skipped a little bit ahead. Let me go back there. Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, has another kind of horticultural significance to it. How many of you guys have seen throughout the Bible that it refers, it refers to plants a lot? Why does it do that? It's something we can relate to, something that we can understand. Because there are concepts in the Word of God that when I go through it and I see something, and I'm like, that's good, but I don't fully grasp it. One of the concepts that I, I, I saw once, and somebody was just like, you know, you don't really completely understand infinite. You don't really completely understand eternity. And I'm like, yeah, I do. It's forever. 
Okay, have you ever experienced forever? Nope. Okay, without saying forever or infinite, describe eternity to me. Eternal? Because it's a concept that's outside of us that we need help in order to describe. So the Bible refers us a lot of times to horticultural terms and things that we can grasp onto to help us understand. Matthew chapter 13, we find the parable of the seeds and the sower. And he talks about how a farmer went out and he sowed seeds in his field and they fell on a a variety of different grounds. Those grounds had different results when the seed hit them and kind of sunk into the soil. Now we won't go through the entirety of that because that's an entire sermon in and of itself. But we want to focus on the good soil. How many of you would like to be good soil for the word of God? Nobody in here wants to be rocky ground or thorny ground or anything like that? Okay, we'll stick to the good soil. So Matthew chapter 13 verse 23 says this, But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it, the one who produces crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. So when he explained to his disciples, he being Jesus, What this parable was about, he told him the seed was essentially the word about the kingdom of God. And the different soils were different circumstances in which the word is heard. But the most prominent circumstance in which the word was heard is the good soil. That's the soil that somebody heard and understood. So what does it mean to understand the word of God? Does it mean that we can conceive of the English words that are set before us? No, not really. Because I can tell you, I've read the Declaration of Independence a ton of times in school. I can't quote it. In fact, memorizing scripture and the word, my parents used to turn it into songs because it was easy for us to remember. And to this day, to this very day, I read certain passages and I start singing them. Because I had to get it past just knowledge up here and let it get down inside here. I needed it to permeate through my life so that I could understand what it means. And I can tell you there were scriptures that I looked at when I was younger and I was like, yep, that's a scripture. No idea how this is going to apply to my life. Until I encountered a circumstance and a scripture sprung to my mind. Most of the time I was singing said scripture, but it sprung to my mind anyway. And I was able to find an application for the word of God in my circumstance and in my situation. And it's helped me throughout life, not because I'm a super spiritual person, but because the word of God made sense to my circumstance. And I understood it just a little bit better. In fact, one of the things that I've heard in my entire life is the word of God is living. That every time you read through the word of God, you're going to get something new out of it. Now, that's not because the word of God changes all the time. Like you open it up and like letters are moving around and you're just like, oh, I've never seen that before. But how many of you have read through the word of God in different circumstances in your life and caught something that spoke to you? I know I have. And the more of life I experience and the different situations that I find myself in, the more and more I have God's word applying specifically to my circumstance. But I have to have that word of God in here and down in here in order for, for, to, to make a difference in my life. So how do we understand the word of God? John chapter 15, verse 5, another reference in gardening somewhat. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now this was Jesus speaking at the time when he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Let me ask you this. If you find a vine... And you break a branch off and you separate it. Does that branch just in your hand sprout a new tree and keep going? No. Because it is cut off from the nutrients that it needs in order to grow and produce fruit. So you and I are branches. That means for us to grow and to move forward, we have to stay connected to the source. The place where we get our nutrients, so to speak, spiritually. That's the word of God. That's our relationship with our creator. That's our communication with him. If we want to grow and we want to understand the word of God, we have to live right here. Sorry, not in this tablet. I have my Bible app open. We have to live in the word of God. 
We have to understand the word of God. We have to read the word of God. We have to memorize the word of God. Because if we are separated from God when trials come, things get real difficult. We have to understand and overcome the things that we do not know or don't know how to handle because we know God knows how to handle them. So we have to stay grounded in him. We have to understand that for us to be good seed, we need to understand the word of God. And for us to continually grow, we have to be connected to the Father so that we can move past the ignorance that we have currently and begin to understand more and more about life through the lens and the scope of God's view. And that brings us to the last thing we're going to talk about tonight and probably the worst thing we're going to talk about tonight. So we've talked about perseverance. We've talked about ignorance and how we need to overcome that. The last thing that prevents us from changing is facing reality. How many of you love to face reality? It's wonderful, isn't it? I found out when I was younger, um, I had very, you know, large ears. I still do to this day. And I used to play with them a lot, and I used to pull them down and, and stretch them out, and people were like, ah, it's funny. So I did it because it got me attention. Until I found out a little later on in life, there are several things on your body that don't stop growing. One of them is your ears. And I had to face the reality that at some point in my life, I'm going to look like Dumbo. <laughs> and I don't like that. Not one bit. But I can't live in the ignorance to say, you know what? My ears might shrink someday and everything will be fine. I had to face reality. Oftentimes in life, we do not like staring at reality. One of the things that is the biggest motivator for change in my own life is facing reality. You ever want to see if you need to go on a diet? Get out of the shower and stand in front of the mirror. That is facing reality. <laughs> I don't want to look. I'm just going to walk away. <laughs> for us, changing and pursuing God is a reality that we need in our own lives. And that takes us understanding why we need that. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 23. I'm sure you guys have heard this scripture. It is not one of my favorites, but it is a necessary one. It compares the fruits of the Spirit with the acts of the flesh. And it says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Our young adult Bible study has been going through a study on the fruits of the Spirit. I got a chance to teach them a lesson similar to this on Friday. And uh, I talked about, we've been going through the study a while, and uh, after we thought about it for a little bit, we've been going through the study a little over two years. We are like, whoa! Mostly because each study on the fruit of the Spirit is probably four to six weeks long. We have some breaks in between. But it's been a study that I've really enjoyed because it's made me incredibly introspective when it comes to my own life and am I producing the correct fruit. It's something that I need to understand so that I know that I'm growing as a Christian. But a lot of times, like we talked about before, one of the biggest ways that we convince ourselves not to make that change is by settling back into something that's more normal for us or more comfortable for us. A place where we were before and it didn't really seem that bad. One of the unfortunate truths of the word of God, or that the word of God brings to light for us, is it's not just about us sitting back and doing nothing. Because if we don't move forward in our relationship with Christ, we're going to start to slide into the acts of the flesh. And we listed those a little bit before. How many of you would like to think you are capable of the acts of the flesh. You know, little immorality, some debauchery, 
you know, hatred, a little bit of discord, dissensions, maybe some drunkenness, orgies. How many of you think that's, that's a great descriptor of where you want to be in your life? It's not. In fact, if you listed those qualities off, you know, and somebody told you, uh, this is my significant other, this is what he's, uh, you know, into, what do you think? Should I marry them? No. Nope. It is time to run. It is time to get far, far, far away from that person. But none of us like to face the reality that if we allow ourselves to walk away from God, you and I and every single person watching online is capable of all of the acts of the flesh. Every single one of us. There is not one of us that is incapable of doing those things. So this is where we have to stop and start facing reality. You see, God is calling us to change, not because we're basically good people and we can sit back and relax and coast through life, but because we're in a fight against a sin nature that wants to drag us into the acts of the flesh. I didn't hear a lot of amens on that one either. But it's a reality we have to face. We have to understand that change is asked of us in God's word, not because we're okay how we are, but we could be better, but because we have the potential to slide into every evil thing if we do not pursue a relationship with our creator. If you're kind of hazy on that concept, just look at the world as it is today. Look how far we've come. When we say men are women and women are men, based off of the way they feel and not their biology. When we remove protections for the unborn, because at some point they're going to be an inconvenience, or they might not have as good a life, so, you know, let's just, you know, not think of them as human. That's fine. Or legislation gets put out to normalize pedophilic behavior and remove protections for those who are minors. There are times that I look at the world around us and I sit there with my jaw open just thinking, God, how far have we come? What is going on? And my mind goes back to the scripture. The acts of the flesh are these. This is what you and I are capable of as human beings. It's not that it's a convenience for us to have a relationship with God and to change for the better. It's a necessity. You and I need to continue to pursue a relationship with Christ. You and I need to continue to seek to grow and better ourselves in the way that God has taught us. Because the Bible says through one man sin entered the world and through sin death. You and I are dealing with the consequences of somebody else's actions. And people have always said, man, if, if you know, Eve didn't take that apple or Adam didn't follow Eve, you know, we... We would be in a much better place. But all of us have free will. Somebody would have messed up along the way. So it's up to us to exercise that free will now to say, you know what? I know what I'm capable of as a human being. And therefore, I must change. I must move forward with the things that God is placing conviction in my life about. They're never easy when they start out with but one of the amazing things that God does for us is as we change and as we grow, we get better and better and life gets better and life gets easier because we are moving away from the bondage of sin and the consequence that comes because of it. It may seem like a good idea at the time. It may seem like it's going to be fun. And sin is fun for a season. And then comes consequence and then comes judgment. So we've understood that change is important to our lives. It's rarely something that's comfortable, but it's something that's necessary. We need to pursue good change by sowing the seeds today so that we can reap a harvest later on this year. It doesn't matter if this is a great year or if this is a year just like the one we came through. You and I can still sow good seeds and we can still find good change in our lives because God is in control and not mankind.
God sits outside of our circumstance and pushes us forward. But in order for us to not go back on that change, we need to understand that there's going to be times that we're going to have to persevere, even when our flesh calls us back. There's going to be times that we're going to encounter a situation that we don't know what to do. And we have to take the ignorance that we have at the moment and turn that over to God and say, God, guide me through this. Whether you use somebody else or you use scripture, whatever it may be, help me when I don't know what to do. And lastly, we have to take a long, hard look at ourselves and face the reality of our situation and who we are as people and say, I am capable of doing bad. Therefore, I must not go back. I must not stand still. I must move on and carry on in times of change because change is important in my life. Bow your heads with me as we close tonight's service. I want to ask two simple questions. And the first is this. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never asked God to help you change. Maybe you've never invited him into your life or surrendered your life to him and said, God, I need you because of who I am as in my flesh. Tonight I want to give you an opportunity if you've never had that opportunity to give your life to Christ. If that's you, I want you just to raise up your hand very quickly. We'll wait just a moment. By the lack of hands, I'm going to assume everybody's had that opportunity and taken it. So I'm going to ask the second question. Tonight, maybe you're looking forward at this new year. And maybe you haven't had that positive outlook. Maybe you haven't been sowing the seeds that you should have been at the beginning of this year. And tonight, if you want to commit to change, to moving forward, to persevering, so that you can better yourself this year and sow the right seeds. I want you just to lift up your hand. Amen. 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 I'm going to wait a moment longer. Is there anyone else? Amen. Amen. Church, let's agree in prayer for these who have raised their hands tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, Lord. For each one, Father, who raised their hands, whether they were in this room, God, or watching us online, whether it was live, Father, or whether it was down the road from this broadcast, God, we pray right now that you would come alongside of them, Father God, that you would give them the strength that is necessary to enact change in their own lives. Lord, let them not look forward to the next year, Father, with fear, God, but let them look forward, God, with joy in knowing that your promise lies ahead of them. Lord, I pray, God, that you would bring conviction on each and every one of us, Father, for the things that we're doing wrong that we need to get rid of. God, I pray that you would give us wisdom and direction as we move forward in that change, as we sow the good seeds day after day. Lord, let us not become weary in well-doing, God, but let us, Lord, walk in your strength, God, carrying your joy with us, knowing that ahead of us lies a prize that is so much better than what's behind us. Lord, let us never forget what the acts of the flesh are, God, and that we are not changing just for the sake of change, but we are changing so that we can become more and more like you, Father, and get closer to the path that you've determined for us, God, the purpose that you have called us for and created us for. Father, I pray that any time each one who raised their hands would get discouraged, or that you would surround them with people that would encourage them. Lord, that they would find scriptures, God, that would speak to them in their specific circumstance. Let us grow in you each and every day. Lord, let us not be weary in well-doing. Father, that we can reach the end of 2021 and look back and say, this is the year that I changed for the better. I thank you, Father, for this. I thank you for never abandoning us, for your love for us, God, and for your word that keeps us moving forward. I praise you for this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Church, I want to encourage you that 2021 can be an amazing year for you. No matter what the circumstances are in your life right now, no matter what the circumstances you're going to find yourself in a day, a week, a month, God can strive with you through any problem that you face, and he will help you come out better than you entered that. Amen. I want to encourage you guys as we close tonight, if you have not come to the movie nights, try to be here Friday. Get here a little bit early, get a good seat, invite a friend. And if you want to make fun of the way Pastor Mike sings, come the next Friday after that. Because we're going to be having Praise Fest. And unfortunately, last year, people didn't understand that I'm not a good singer. 
and they've requested me for several different songs. But if you guys want to come out and support the ministry that we do here at Evangel, we would welcome you guys to be here. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. We will see you next time.